listening to Newsday on the BBC World Service. I've just been watching some video footage of somebody called Julia Hawkins setting a new world record over 60 metres. Her time was in the region of 24 seconds. Now, might not sound too fast, pretty good. Uh, but bear in mind the hurricane, as she's known, is 102 years old, Lawrence. 102. Uh, she was joined in the record books by uh, the slip of a man, much younger, Orville Rogers. He's only 100. Tom Hagler called both of them up after their victories at the USA Track and Field Masters in Maryland. First of all, lovely to speak to you both. Congratulations to both of you. Fantastic news for the world record holders. Um, Julia, first of all, this isn't the first time you've won a world record. No, it isn't the first time. So you're getting used to it. How many world records have you won? I have three right now. <laughs> and how? It's the hundred, the, the sixty, and the fifty. I don't keep up with the numbers. I just get told that you did pretty good. That's excellent. You just, you know, you just want to stay ahead of the pack, obviously. What is the secret, you guys? Because there, there are many hundred-year-olds out there who find it difficult to walk, let alone run. What do you think the secret is that you can go on a track and sprint and get world records? One thing I think is marry a good man, one that you like and admire and respect as well as love. And when you have that on your place, everything is wonderful. You can live healthy, you can be happy, and you can do the good things. Orville, what's your secret? Well, I'm a believer, and uh, God promised us a long, good life. I've had a happy marriage, I have great friends, I have been running for more than 50 years, and, and uh, it just all goes together with uh, a long, good life. So, Orville, you're a late starter then. You started, what, just after 50? Why, why was that? Why so late? I read Dr. Cooper's book, Aerobics, and that set the world on fire for exercise. And I've been running ever since. I've totaled over 42,000 miles. I have set 18 world records in my age group. Oh, that's great. Well, it's great that you two know each other off the track. What about on the track? Would you would you have a, a, a run-off, a face-off, the two of you? Have you ever tried that? No, I haven't, ever. And I, no. would, I, would, I would be interested to race against him. <laughs> and there must be lots of people listening to this who are you know, I mean, just over over 50, over 60, let alone 80, 90, 100, who are thinking, uh, finding it very difficult to do exercise or whatever. What would be your words of advice to those those people, Julia? Well, I think it's just having passions in later in life, things that you're interested in, like the wonders of the world, and it's, it's cheap, doesn't cost you anything, and I had several magic moments today. I had old orchids people had given me the three of them, new growth and, and flowers, buds on them today. And that made me so happy to see that. It's things like that that make you stay young, I think. What is the world and magic moments like that was for me. And Orville, for, for those people listening who feel it's difficult sometimes to get off their the couch or the or the settee and, and feel their bones are letting them down what would you say well i enjoy running and i would encourage anybody to start a vigorous exercise program the latest scientific study i'm aware of was comprised of 660 thousand people out of a hospital in boston and uh, they showed that exercise would add three or four hours of lifespan for every one hour of exercise. That's pretty good return on your time. Certainly is. Uh, Orville Rogers uh, there and Julia Hurricane Hawkins. Great adverts for running. Uh, 100 and 102 years old record breakers respectively. This is the BBC World Service, and here's Mr. Fabia <laughs> to tell us where the Arts Hour is heading to this month. We're here in San Francisco to find out how the technology pioneered here is influencing world culture and artists in the city itself. We've got comedy from star of the San Francisco circuit, Francesca Fiorentini, and live music from the city's hottest bands. The Arts Hour on tour in San Francisco, Sunday at 14 and Monday at 8 GMT. 
and in 60 minutes, The Forum with Bridget Kendall. We're going to be exploring the extraordinary heady world of the French fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent. A tale of innovation and surprising longevity in an industry known for its fickleness and constantly changing fashion trends. BBC World Hacks is next. This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. Coming up after the news, it's World Hacks, the program that looks for solutions to some of the world's most difficult problems, with me, Tallulah Berry. This week, that problem is not an easy one. Tom Coles has been looking at the chaotic lives of homeless people in the UK, people who end up living on the street, often battling drug and alcohol addiction. Yeah, this is a life that is just very bad for your health and means you end up spending a lot of time in hospital, often leaving after your treatment and having to spend that very night sleeping on a pavement. And that's where our problem solvers come in, a specialist hospital unit which tries to stop that from happening. Yeah, exactly. They take this moment when a homeless person is stuck in a hospital hospital bed and turn it into an opportunity. Sometimes it's said, well, if people come in from the street, then they can go back to the street. But for us, that's just not the way we work. How to help homeless people in hospital. Coming up after the BBC News. BBC News with Sue Montgomery. China's annual parliamentary session has closed with President Xi Jinping outlining a nationalist vision of his country as a rising global power. He spoke of the China solution to world problems. John Sudworth was there. Following the earlier vote to abolish the presidential term limits, Xi Jinping's closing speech offered a glimpse of what he intends to do with his now unlimited, indefinite power. We are ever more close to realizing the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, he said. It's not the first time we've heard such phrases, but this was a strongly nationalistic speech, with the biggest applause coming for Mr. Xi's warning to Taiwan and Hong Kong in particular that independence movements would be defeated. Judicial sources in France say the former president, Nicolas Sarkozy, has been taken into police custody. He's being interviewed in connection with an investigation into alleged irregularities over political campaign financing. French media say the police probe relates to alleged funding from the late Libyan leader, Colonel Gaddafi, during Mr. Sarkozy's presidential election campaign in 2007. 23 Russian diplomats and their families are due to leave London today, having been expelled by Britain in retaliation for what the British government believes was a nerve agent attack orchestrated by Moscow. On Saturday, Russia responded by ordering the expulsion of a similar number of British diplomats. James Robbins reports. For Britain, this is both expulsion day and another decision day. The Russian embassy in London will say goodbye to its 23 diplomats ordered out by the Prime Minister as undercover intelligence officers. As they leave, Theresa May and her senior ministers will consider possible next steps against Russia. After Moscow's response on Saturday, expelling the same number of British diplomats, will Britain now decide to launch a second round of measures? The United States and South Korea are to resume military exercises on the 1st of April. There had been speculation the manoeuvres would be scaled back to avoid jeopardising peace talks. From Seoul, here's Laura Bicker. The military exercises involving hundreds of thousands of troops are held every spring in South Korea and they usually inflame Pyongyang. State media in North Korea have described them in the past as preparation for war. The exercises were postponed this year during the Winter Olympic Games in an effort to keep the dialogue with the North going. A spokesman for the Pentagon said that the combined exercises are defence orientated and there's no reason for North Korea to view them as a provocation. World News from the BBC Norway's Justice Minister Sylvie Listhaug has announced her resignation after a motion of no confidence was tabled against her. Her decision eases the pressure on the minority government, which was in danger of collapsing. Ms. Listhaug had accused the Labour opposition of putting the rights of terrorists above national security. This angered the party because nearly 70 of its young activists were killed by a right-wing fanatic. 
The Weinstein Company, which has filed for bankruptcy, has announced that it's releasing any victims of Harvey Weinstein's alleged misconduct from any non-disclosure agreements that had prevented them from speaking out. The 